Hello, everybody. Welcome to the functional update for Geo. I'm Stan Hu, uh, no longer the Geo manager, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, for those of you who don't, know, who don't know, first of all, what Geo is, it is this project for GitLab that essentially does this. You have two, a primary GitLab instance and a secondary GitLab instance. One of them's a, a essentially a mirror of the other. And uh, we can talk about more why if you want to know, but that's really it in a nutshell. Um, the team has undergone a few changes in the last um, few weeks. Uh, Rachel Minabar has joined as the engineering manager for GEO now, so she'll be taking over the, a lot of the responsibilities I had with GEO. Um, really happy to have her aboard. Um, we've got two people who've uh, moved from GEO to other teams. Um, as some of you know, we staffed up GEO a lot this year to make GEO uh, generally available to our customers, but also to do this uh, Google migration. And now that the Google migration is over, we can refocus um, some of our team members to do other parts of um, GitLab. So thanks, Nick and Brett. You guys did a fabulous job, especially with coordinating this migration. Really happy to have you uh, on the team the last uh, few months and um, you know, looking forward to working with you guys in the future. Um, the, TO, the team itself is this. Um, other than the changes I mentioned, it's uh, pretty much the same um, as a few months ago. Um, still a full uh, set of people to do a lot of great work. So um, yeah, I know. let's talk about the Azure Google switchover. And as many of you know at the summit, um, it, it, it happened about on August 11th, and I think it was successful. We can all celebrate. And I was really proud of how uh, the whole team, Geo especially, and all the rest of the, the, the groups around GitLab worked together to get this done. So um, yeah, uh, this, this was a mission accomplished. We moved over 200 terabytes of Git repository and wiki data from Microsoft Azure to Google. And, if we did our jobs right, and most people didn't even notice, right? We had a little downtime on the 11th, but other than that, came back up, and most people just picked up where they left off, and that's to me a success. Um, and you know, there's five over five million projects on GitLab.com, so it was not a trivial matter of a lot of edge cases, weird things that were happening on GitLab.com that we investigated, we fixed, and we shipped it uh, to our customers. So uh, we moved. You know, we had millions of LFS objects, attachments, CI build artifacts, all sorts of little files everywhere. And Geo transferred a lot of them, and eventually we moved them all to object storage to kind of ease that burden. But we proved that Geo could do that. Um, and as I mentioned, just working on Geo was not just about working on a separate product. We were actually finding a lot of strange things with um, GitLab itself. For example, you know, error cases. You know, with, with repositories didn't exist. We we'd see a lot of errors when people were trying to clone them. So we we dealt with those and we fixed a lot of issues. Um, everything from database constraints to files not being in the right place. And so I think it was a great way to just kind of dig deep into figuring out whether we had everything. Um, in GitLab.com, and when we migrated, we actually double checked that you know files were actually migrated properly. So, as I said before, this is a huge team effort. It was a cross-functional group coordination between the infrastructure team, database team, distribution team. Everybody was involved with this. So, really, hats off. I'm really proud of of what we did, but also how we also worked together. You know, there's so many different moving parts to this. And in the end, it, you know, it took us the better part of this year, but we, we, we did it. So I'm really happy to close this chapter in, this, in the GEO story and kind of talk about the future of GEO. Um, you know, after the migration, we actually discovered a number of things that uh, uh, GEO should have done but did not do. So for example, if you had a project that you created and then you changed your default branch later on in the process, Geo didn't actually notice that, and it's actually this is a, a an issue within Git itself. With when you do uh, when you do a pull, you don't actually get the updates to this default branch. And we um, shipped a fix, fix for this uh, thanks to Douglas in 11.3, um, and we're talking to Git maintainers on how to make this sort of part of Git itself because this is something that we solved kind of with this um, you know three-step dance as I mentioned the issue that really should just be done by Git. And we've got a lot of great responses within the Git community about, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, uh, Christian um, Kudera is, is looking at that. Uh, we found that when people were creating merge requests from forks, um, not always the commits. So normally what should happen is that the source, the target repository that you're trying to merge to gets synced with all the commits in that fork. And we found that that wasn't always happening. Um, and Mike shipped a fix in 11.3 to make sure that that, that would 
be taken care of for next time. And the last thing that we noticed is that we've got about 20,000 push mirrors on GitLab.com. And when we migrated to GCP, they actually stopped working. And the reason is because, you know, when we create a push mirror, we assume that the Git remote has been added um, when we create that push mirror, but that's not actually true in the migration because when we migrated, we didn't actually reflect that, uh, we, we didn't ensure that that remote actually existed. So again, we shipped a fix that says, every time we start this push mirror, make sure that remote is there. So, not, so nothing here wasn't super major, but the default branch was kind of a surprise. We should have caught that earlier. Uh, but other than that, I think everything went pretty smoothly and all these things were rectified um, pretty quickly after the migration within weeks. Um, so this is a feature, uh, this feature we've been talking about a while is making the uh, geo more friendly to uh, users because right now if you are working on a geo primary you have to know that or a geo secondary you have to know that what are the what's the primary what's the secondary so if you're pushing to something you have to know that you're pushing to the right repository so right now if i'm a, I'm a user and i decide to push to a geo secondary you get this error message it says you can't push to a read only instance go to the primary um, in 11.3 which we're going to ship on the 22nd uh, we've changed the picture here uh, thanks to Ash McKenzie, a lot of the hard work gone over the last couple months um, to make this more transparent. So if you're you're working on the geo secondary, you decide to push, it will actually proxy to the primary behind the scenes, and then it, to the user, it looks like it just worked. Um, as you can see with this error message, it looks like it goes to the secondary when in fact it went to the primary, and then eventually the secondary will sync and get all the uh, updates. Um, so this is really cool. If you want to see in more detail how this works behind the scenes, the issue there has uh, uh, the actual diagram of where all the API endpoints uh, are, are working in this in this workflow. So that's again happening in 11.3. We just deployed um, the version on GitLab.com that would support this. So really excited about this feature. It's a, it's a big feature. Um, so things that we need help that are stalled with. Um, the first priority, and I think everyone on the team would echo this point, is that uh, we need Geo back up and running on GitLab.com. We we saw a lot of issues at scale when we had it running for the last year. We found a lot of little problems and also big problems. Um, this this uh, drinking our own wine really, really helped and um, can underscore the necessity for this. And we've been talking with the infrastructure team about um, doing this and it's just a matter of scheduling time and getting this done. Um, so again, just wanna reiterate the importance of this because right now we don't have any feedback for 11.3, for example. Um, you know, other problems that we introduced and uh, we can catch them locally, but it would really be nice to have it on GitLab.com. Um, a lot of the performance uh, database queries in particular uh, that we saw during our deployment uh, would help be helped a lot by upgrading to Postgres 10.0. Um, Postgres 10.0 has this uh, f feature called aggregate pushdowns. And what that means is if you do a select across two different databases, it does some intelligence and actually uh, makes that fast. Um, right now we have a workaround that basically is this really ugly query that's megabytes long because we don't have the support. Um, and so this is sort of, again, another cross-functional task. We need help from the distribution team, we need help from the database team, infrastructure team to get this deployed, figure out the upgrade path. Um, not a trivial matter because every time you upgrade a, uh, what they call a minor version of Postgres, it's a significant undertaking. Uh, what are we going to do um, in the future? Well, I, I really see it as kind of breaking down these four different categories, reliability, disaster recovery, performance, and UI UX. And we're working on um, a number of these different issues, a lot of uh, things related to just making Geo kind of rock solid for the enterprise. So um, for example, the reliability is the hash storage store. We've been talking about this for a while, about having immutable paths in our repositories. And we've we've we're, to under, we're, we're going through the stage rollout on GitLab.com. We, we finished the first stage, and then we're gonna be continuing the next week to, to roll it out more and more to different projects. Um, you know, on the DR front, uh, we did a lot of manual things in uh, the, this whole switch over because of time and because we're trying to understand like what we need to do, what users need to do. And so we've got a run book of what we did and we're looking at that and figure out well, what are these things, what are the lessons we can learn from these things that we did manually on the console and, and how do we make that part of the product? How do we make sure that you know, users don't ever have to worry about, oh, hey, do I need to re you know, reset my verification status? Can we just do this automatically? Um, as I mentioned, kind of alluded earlier, is we have you know, a lot of performance issues in terms of database queries because you know, we have got 5 million projects 
Um, we, we're doing a lot of queries to figure out, hey, do we have all 5 million projects? And that can be really expensive. You're talking about millions and millions of rows. And so we're looking at different options there. Um, you know, one of them is this feature in Postgres called logical decoding. Had a long discussion with um, the our Ingress consultants to figure out, like, is this a right, right solution? Can it work? What are the limitations? So there's a lot of good discussion in that issue about that. Um, push to primary, I talked about that earlier. There's a lot of pr improvements that we can make with that feature that um, we just shipped. For example, a lot of the, the proxying is done in Unicorn the, and not in Workhorse, and that can tie up a Unicorn worker if you've got a lot of busy pushes. Um, so we're gonna be thinking, we're looking at moving that into Workhorse and other legend improvements. And overall, there's the UI UX improvements that we can always make and just make it easier for the admin to understand what's going on in Geo and and so there's an issue there that kind of shows you the screenshots and things that we're thinking about. So that's really Geo. Um, happy to open the floor to any questions, concerns. Yeah, everybody's excited about push to, push to primary. It's not push to secondary. Yeah, I guess it's technically push to secondary because it doesn't look like an actual push to the secondary. Do we anticipate needing security app reviews? I actually think we do. I think it would be a good thing because Geo is sort of this feature that has access to all the repositories and all the wikis, all the issues. Uh, we really should be looking at um, what are the holes. Um, we've we've taken a lot of efforts to make sure we don't expose tokens and things like that. We use you know a rotating token that's generated for the session, but there are probably other there may be potentially other things that we need to look at. So yeah, I'd welcome a security review um, uh, as much as we can there. <gasps> Do we think we'll make the GeoNode on GitLogic Hub public in the sense of recommending? That's a good question. Um, I don't know if we, we, I think when we talked about in the migration, we didn't want to do that uh, because of a number of reasons, but um, I think it's definitely a possibility. Uh, if people want to clone or poke around or secondary, um, there may be other reasons why we may not want to do that just for just reducing the, you know, the, the, the uh, security scope and things like that. But um, uh, what region are we thinking? I, I think that's up for debate in that issue. Uh, I was just saying, well, we probably want it in the U.S. West just because if the East Coast goes down, maybe one on the West Coast. But there's an argument to be made that, hey, maybe Europe is a better, better place for that. Uh, will we do more than one? I'm not sure. I think we're looking at one right now. I think the main reason may be cost here. Um, we've got over 200 terabytes of data, and having one replica already is pretty expensive. So. Um, but other than that, there's no there's no other reason why I can't think of why we can't have multiple replicas. <gasps> okay. Uh, another so, questions. Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, great work. Like th th that, the fact that the migration went well and. There were so many moving parts. It was great validation and really cool to see how how ready uh, GNO is for mission critical apps. Um, if we're going to use it for DR, I'm going to prevent mass deletions. Um, obviously, we're also going to do just plain backups. But are we going to have something in place? I'm not sure what what the easiest ways to do a mass deletion in GitLab. But if there's an are there operator errors? We're going to make sure that don't get replicated or something like that. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, one thing we could do is have a repl delayed replica, for example. So, you know, it could be lagging an hour or 24 hours or something so that things don't get actually reflected until later. Um, that could be one avenue. But um, as far as mass deletion, uh, I don't. I think we should probably create an issue around discussing if there are things that we can catch. You know, someone does a drop table, maybe you do something like you, 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 you you avoid that, but that's a, that's a database issue. But if you if you have something where you see a ton of delete events, maybe you should flag it and prevent that. Cool. And we had the the problem with basically the cursor moving and missing things. Is that is the issue geological replication case issue seven four two zero where we discussed that? Yeah, or? we're discussing that in the logical decoding case. We've had a long discussion about hey, this logical replication or decoding um, work and. Yes, it does, but at the same time, it introduces 
um, and you know another thing that we have to configure um, another more disk space that happens because you're basically you're adding another replication slot so it's like you're having another streaming replica so there are some problems with that you're you're adding more disk space usage the replica goes offline so we have to go we got to make a decision of you know is it worthwhile to to do that, or there, are, I think Jose uh, actually volunteered some interesting ideas of, hey, maybe you can timestamp all your com all, all the events so that you're actually when you look at when you're looking through the, which events you haven't processed, you actually look at the commit times, and maybe that's a more immediate solution rather than try to go down this path of of introducing logical replication or decoding. Yeah, simpler sounds uh, better. But uh, now that Geo is, is getting better, like we've got a lot of finishing up to do, but are there plans to, uh, what are the plans for the, for the size of the team? Yeah, so as I mentioned, I think the current size, and we already uh, had two people uh, move off the team this month. Um, as far as I know, there are no other changes right now, but that, I'll leave that to Rachel and, the, and Tommy to discuss whether, you know, we need other people to be prioritized on other projects. Cool. Thanks, uh, thanks for the update. All right. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Have a great day.